Joining us now is Oji Okpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinx. Good morning, Dr. Vati. We to missed you last Friday. Yes, I missed you You should too. have seen Tundu. Tundu was on <laughs> top of her game. <laughs> she was yes. like, let me summon my inner Dr. Vati. <laughs> I loved it. Are you, are you good? You're she did it right. right. I yeah. loved it. <laughs> good morning. Jinx. <laughs> you know, hello, Jinx. Yes. <laughs> Okay, what awesome. do you have for Mr. us? Mr. did say that him and somebody were partners in crime wearing the same color. It was oh, oh, not oh, 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 Surprise, surprise! <laughs> it was <laughs> OG. We got the, we got the memo, both of us. Well, good morning, you all. What is? And good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, lines of mourners paid their respects on Sunday for Gabby Petito. The 22-year-old whose death on a cross-country trip has sparked a manhunt for her fiancé, Brian Laundrie, who is now the suspect of a federal arrest warrant for events following her death. In Japan, Princess Mako, the granddaughter of the country's former emperor, Akihito, is now set to forego a one-off million-dollar payment for giving up her royal status to wed her fiancé, who she met in college, Clearing way for a marriage delayed for years by controversy. In Afghanistan over the weekend, reactions trailed the execution of four alleged kidnappers by Taliban authorities in the western city of Herat. Their bodies were hung up in public to deter others in a gruesome display that signaled the hardline movement's return to some of its brutal tactics of the past. Under sports, excitement as Nigeria's female basketball team, the Tigress, over the weekend defeated Mali in the final of the 2021 Women's Afro Basket Championship in Yaoundé, Cameroon, completing a hat trick of consecutive Afro Basket titles. Finally, under entertainment, Moulin Rouge, the musical, took home 10 Tony Awards and won the Best New Musical Crown at the awards ceremony on Sunday night, as Broadway looked back to honor shows shuttered by COVID-19. Well, let's begin what's trending in the United States. More videos have emerged following accusations by Professor Banji Akintoye, the chairman of the Nigerian Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for Self-Determination, indicating that the federal government is sponsoring foreigners to stage protests in the country. Last week, the professor alleged that the federal government paid foreigners $500 per head to stage a pro-Buhari protest at the United Nations headquarters in New York on the day President Mohamed Buhari addressed the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Let's take a look at this video before we come back for a discussion. All the one Nigeria folks, this is where they are giving them clothes. They give them clothes, uh, they, they, they hire them for $50, $50, and they give them clothes, as you, as you can see. So what they do is they come here and they pay you to protest against us. That's what they do. They pay you to protest against us. You are collecting money? You are not in Nigeria? You are collecting money? And they are using Bank of America. Bank of America to, to, to do their evil. Right here, they are using Bank of America to do their evil. This is what is happening in Nigeria, killing, sodomy, killing, killing, kidnapping, when you are those clothes, you die like this. We are those clothes so that you can die like this. We are trying to stop it. We are, gonna, we are not going to complain. We are trying to stop it. But these people, but guess what? Yes, they send us over here. We don't want to be here. They send us over here. They are the ones selling us into slavery. They are the ones selling you into slavery. They are selling us into slavery. When you collect that money, you are selling yourself into slavery. We are trying to change that. We are trying to change that. Uh, Dr. Bati, you weren't here on Friday. We took a story where... Um, a man videoed uh, a protester, a pro-Buhari protester, who claimed that he was paid, actually. So my question is, these people that are paying these protesters, isn't it possible that they do a campaign and really have people come out to, to protest or to come out to register their views on this administration? Dr. Abati. Well, I mean, earlier on on this program, we had uh, Professor Bola Jiakin, former Minister of External Affairs of Nigeria. 
And this question was posed to okay. him uh, about the implications of this. And he, he, he told us that, look, it provides good entertainment, pure theater, oh. you know, and that it, it is not new. Uh, that even, uh, you know, with regard to Israel, mm -hmm. with other international courses, you find two groups, you know, uh, you find them promoting two different positions uh, in front of the uh, uh, United Nations uh, General Assembly, and that this is just after that tradition. But the distinction should be made between the message and the messenger. Here we have two sets of uh, messages. On one hand, you have the group, uh, the Million Man March, led mm -hmm. by Professor Banji Akintoye and the Alliance for Self-Determination, otherwise known as uh, NINAS. Mm -hmm. uh, they saying, look, Nigeria is not working. There's terrorism in Nigeria. Self-determination should be allowed. Well, the way it works, you will not expect the government, the Nigerian government, or the embassy, uh, or the consulate of Nigeria in New York, uh, to fold his hands and allow just the uh, message of the protesters to uh, go ahead. So they organized their own. They got a, 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 you know, a gang together, uh, gave them those uh, placards, and uh, probably gave them $50, or is it uh, $500, gave them T-shirts. But what is important is that whether they are Nigerians or not, they were able to put out a counter message, you know, and uh, I would have been surprised if the Nigerian government did not take that step. Even in uh, the UK the other time, when Renu Amokri uh, led a similar protest against President Buhari going to the UK for uh, medical checkup. Now, you had a counter crowd, mm -hmm. you know, that was also uh, projecting a different kind of, uh, of message. So that's how it works. But what is important is, what is the truth? Mm -hmm. What is the reality of the Nigerian situation? Uh, you can rent a crowd, but the, the, the crowd that you have hired the representation that you have made in front of an international uh, community. What you have to deal with at the end of the day is the reality in your country. And back home here, uh, every Niger is every Nigerian happy? No. Mm. Are there persons who want to succeed? Yes. Are there persons who say the country is not working? Yes. Those are some of the realities that we have to deal with. And that's the substance uh, that the Nigerian government should uh, take away from all of this beyond the uh, entertainment or the rented crowd, uh, you know, efforts made on the streets of uh, New York and at the UN General Assembly. Rufai, you just said that, you know, the money has reduced. Before it was 500 yes, and I'm now surprised. it's 50, 50. Maybe they are getting more people. <laughs> so the money has reduced. You know, but, 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 but you see, yes, you have protest and counter protest. But I think the most important part of it for me is the fact that Amidst all of this, people are dying as a result of the concerns raised by these protesters. Mm -hmm. The military in the Northeast just lost some soldiers. Better students are still in the net of captors. There's insecurity everywhere. Oji, back in the days, I used to love something about Nigeria. The fact that I can get in a car and take a road trip. You know, went up to Niger, New Bossa sometimes. Remember growing up with my dad having those trips. You can't do that again, you know, in the Pojo 504. You can't do that again in Nigeria. Enjoy the lushness and the freshness of countryside Nigeria. Because you'll be shocked, attacked, you'll be killed. You know, there's insecurity everywhere. And we cannot mitigate that. We need to shout about that. Because it's stifling businesses. Because people that are planting things can't go to their farms again. See what happened in Zababari the other day, where the only crime those farmers committed was because they wanted to go harvest produce and hundreds of them were slaughtered. So apart from all these counter protests at the United Nations and everything, we should ask ourselves, what led to the protest you know, for, by, by, the, by the Yoruba nation agitators? Right. Because their people were killed in Igogon. And those killings, if you ask me, has peace returned? No, they still have attacks from time to time. So we must make this country safe for all. Yeah. I think that's the principal part, apart from this, you know, theatrics. So people collecting $50 to protest. And if you collect money to protest, it shows you don't have convictions about the protest. People that protest for free and have those issues have convictions.
Tundu, one of the protesters there was saying, you know, they, the, they should take their agitation to Nigeria. They should leave them alone and, you know, they're allowed to collect money to protest. What's, what's your thought on that? Not all money is yes. good money, darling. The, I the went on road trips. Money. Yes, I <laughs> went like, on road trips with both yeah. my parents. Today, I dare not take my children on right. any road trip. And what really hurts me, if it was some Caucasian calling Nigeria a terrorist country, saying, if you go to Nigeria, you will die, you will be kidnapped, it would all be filled with righteous indignation. But hearing that from those Nigerians who have better things to do, quite frankly, yeah. on a New York, you know, nice day in the afternoon mm. than to come and be screaming, they are so hurt. They are, they are so disgusted. And I'm sorry, rightly so. Yeah. It hurts me to hear that. And none of what they're saying can be dismissed. Mm. There's this general perception that this kind of behavior, this kind of criminality that's running rampant is doing so because it is allowed. You will recall Gary Bashe, because I cannot forget, saying that what um, President Buhari has done to the bandits is worse than calling them terrorists. Well, no, it isn't. All of that whole, oh, we're not going to name them and shame them, we're going to actually prosecute them, fine. But then go ahead. Instead, what do we have? Crickets. So this is why people are ranting. They are so upset. You cannot even go to your own country. You're telling total strangers. Strangers, foreigners, mm -hmm. if you come to Nigeria, you will be killed. Yes. Your family will be killed. Your wife will be That's raped. And that man sounding just like me, something I would say, actually, that if you're holding one of these placards, it will happen to your family. Yes. <laughs> That, that I can yes. say it. Okay. No, no, because, Not because, because I believe love, it. Because no, it's just what goes around comes around. around. It's a spiritual law. Do not carry any random placard unless you are prepared to bear the cut. <laughs> yes! No, Absolutely. Don't you carry any random placard. <laughs> it's true. Very well said. I mean, we are Very saying well this said. because we've not been affected. Right. Yeah, we can sit here because we've not been affected. All right. We'll take another story. Renowned author Chumamanda Ngozi Adichie's keynote speech at a Humboldt Forum in Berlin, in which she called the British Museum to follow Germany's footsteps in returning looted Benin artifacts to Nigeria has made rounds on social media. Let's take a listen to an excerpt of the speech before we come back for a discussion. Here's a headline I just read in a German publication. The headline says, where do Africa's treasures belong? Now imagine this headline differently. Imagine if it said, where do Germany's treasures belong? It would be a redundant question, because of course, Germany's treasures belong in Germany. But the question would never even be asked, because there would be no circumstance in which it would be. When we talk about this art that was stolen, we're told that they cannot be returned to Africa, for example, because Africans will not take good care of them. It is not merely condescending to say, I cannot return what I stole from you because you will not take good care of it. It is also lacking in basic logic. Since when has the basis of ownership been taking good care of what is owned? This position is paternalistic arrogance of the most stunning sort. It does not matter whether Africans or Asians or Latin Americans can take care of the art stolen from them. What matters is that it is theirs. The brilliant Nigerian artist Victor Hikameno put it much better than I could and in very Nigerian terms. He says, if I come and steal your rapper and I say I won't give you back your rapper because you will not tie it properly around your waist, or you will not wash it well, and so the colors will fade, or this or that, all are irrelevant. The rapper is mine, and I can do with it what I will. Give me back my rapper, because it is mine. That was such a stunning speech. And I encourage every Nigerian to watch the speech in its entirety, because she made a lot of valid points. I mean, I think that it's amazing that she has now, you know, She's added her voice to the call for the return of our looted bronzes. But what are we going to do? Because it's beyond people calling for this. Mm -hmm. The British, for example, to just name one of the colonial, uh, former colonial masters, now 
pretending to try and atone for their past sins, they actually legislated their illegitimacy. The British Museum Act actually prevents the British Museum from permanently returning looted artifacts, which is a disgrace. So that they can conveniently say, oh, we can't do it because it's against the law. You do have, yes, because they have legislated it in black and white. And can most of the yep. stolen bronzes are in the British Museum. They have yeah. 900 yes. pieces. Yeah. You have a few. You have one in Aberdeen. They can return it because it's not under the national portfolio. Newcastle, I believe, and one of the museums in Cambridge. But the major British museums cannot. That is how disgusting this is. Even in France, there's legislation to prevent them from permanently returning what they stole. And they did steal it. Now, this is a really important cause. And I really want to credit Bernie Grant. That's the first person. That was the first black MP who really raised awareness of this, a, British, a black British MP. And kudos to him. Back in the 90s, he has been on this campaign. And because of people like him, it's gaining more and more traction, such that Germany is now going, you know, towing the line that they ought to, and atoning for that egregious sin that was committed. And these bronzes are all over the place. Like I said, OK, that large concentration in the British Museum. What about the Elgin marbles? Mm -hmm. Greece is fighting for their property, for their artifacts. Mm -hmm. And the British are flatly refusing to return the Elgin marbles. I mean, it's a disgrace. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it is amazing, though, that Germany has uh, agreed to return 1,100, I believe, and 1,300 artifacts. artifacts. Rufai, your thoughts on that? I mean, there's still more they have to return. So I don't understand the madness that goes on with the West. Because I don't know what half Africa as a continent has done to the West. You come here, you rape us, physically and literally. You take everything away from us. Now we are saying... Bring it back. Yeah. We're not even taking you to court to pay for damages. Just bring the bloody thing back. The Benin bronzes, we saw them. They took pictures. You know, the British are the only thieves that do a photo rob of what they stole. Because they're not aware that they're stealing. They Don't stole. You understand? They did a photo rob when they went to above Warawe's palace and took all those bronzes and, and sacked the palace yes. in 1897. Yes. Yes. They did a photo rob. They stood there. And they showed the world they were stealing. They don't say it's theft. You're not human. And those photos are still there. And we are saying return. They don't want to return. Mm -hmm. Nigerian Museum, there's a museum coming up here in Onikon, mm -hmm. you know, of Yoruba culture and all of that. Some of these exhibitions will be done, but it will be on loan. Mm -hmm. We can't have that. You see, because before you stole all of these things, they were in palaces in Africa. We are not goats here. We had palaces. Mm -hmm. We are an established nation. We didn't have your Western civilization. Civilization. Not everybody was having a Western civilization anyway. No. All right? We had our own street lights. We built the Benin modes. We were living our lives. We had Timbuktu in Mali, where they were scholars. We had Senkore University in 1500s. Just return it. Return. Stop all this talk that we can't take care of it. We're taking care of it already before you came to steal it. Absolutely. And if you think we can't take care of it, we can reproduce it because we made most of those brown castings in Benin here. Basically, it's none of your business if we can take care Just of it or not. Just money return it. Okay. Uh, again, <sighs> you know I'm an unrepentant fan of yes, Shimama Adichie, but I think it's important first that we commend her yes. for lending her voice Correct. to this call for the return of uh, looted artifacts, uh, not just from Nigeria, but from the whole of uh, Africa. And for me, you know, she made the point before she went into the details. When she started with the story of the Ikenga, mm. you know, uh, when she was doing the research for her second novel, Half of a Yellow Sun, and how she used the story of the Ikenga to make the point about the symbolism of African art yes. and how African art is, just, is not just about the aesthetics, how it is a spiritual thing, how it is something about the spirit of a race. Will it then be right? She put the question, posed the question to go and trap other people's you know, uh, cultural, religious, spiritual symbols, uh, steal them and display them in Western museums. Now, she then went on to make a case for the return of those looted artifacts. She commended Germany for agreeing to return 1,300 artifacts to Nigeria. Nigeria began to negotiate uh, with Germany in 2019. But what uh, uh, Germany promised is that they will make substantial return. And she raised the question, how substantial, mm -hmm. and who determines what you are going to uh, uh, return. Nigeria has told Germany that we want full and unconditional return of the artifacts in, the, in uh, Germany. The second point she raised, she used the opportunity to call out the British 
And there was a gentleman in the hall, a top British historian, called Nelly. And he said, look, the British should learn from the Germans and also make a commitment to return those artifacts that were stolen from uh, uh, Benin during the Benin expedition of 1897, right? And then she criticized a policy, now to go to uh, the act that uh, Tundu uh, quoted, the British Museum Act, where there is a policy what they, that they call retain and explain policy. Mm. And she said, look, that retain and uh, uh, explain policy is arrogant and it is unacceptable uh, to us. What it means is that the British can allow you to take the uh, artifact only under special circumstances right. and with the express approval of the British authorities. So when she talked about paternalistic arrogance, I think that is the point. The advocacy, the engagement uh, should continue uh, to make sure that you know these artifacts yeah. that she says are cultural, spiritual, religious symbols uh, should be returned. And maybe perhaps what should be added is that there should be a reparation. Yes, that's a, the federal government is for, calling for, for that, stealing, of course. You know, uh, artifacts yes. from Africa during the inglorious days of uh, colonialism and uh, slavery and, uh, you know, uh, the brutality of the empire. Well, Very you know, well you said, know I'm a supporter of reparations. Yes. Where's Killmonger yeah. when yes. you need him? No. <laughs> you always go there, don't you? We'll take our final story. Over the weekend, a video showing campaign posters of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu superimposed on rail lines and airport terminals in the United Kingdom circulated online. Let's take a look. Is he running or not? I mean, he hasn't come out to say, but this, <laughs> to me, you're cracking up. I'm sorry, I can't hold myself. <laughs> Refi quickly your analysis on this. I mean, with that video, was he running for the mayor of London? <laughs> or is he, does he want to take uh, Sajid Javid? Uh, I said Sajid Javid, what's the mayor of London's name again? I forget his name. You know, because I, when I look at this, on London Underground and everywhere and all of that, I'm sure these are some of the supporters that are doing it. If he wants to get in there. Come out here. But what is most important for me are the issues. I, you see, all of these are just political calisthenics. Who can solve the insecurity problem? Who can solve the poverty problem? Who can change the life of Nigerians and exactly. bring them out of this place? Those are the issues. Well, this one are just... Uh, <laughs> You know what, there's a word you call yes. serere. Yes, we can. Thank yes, you. we can. Dr. Abati, I mean, I don't know if we have well, much time I mean, for your comments. I think the quick. irony of those uh, adverts should not be lost on us. Yeah. Uh, look at that beautiful train station. Yes. yes. I wish we could have that here. Yes. yes. Look at that very clean, well-kept on the ground. Yes. Uh, I wish we could have that here. Look at the electricity, uh, you know, supply. I wish we could have that here. Uh, but who knows? Uh, maybe, uh, you know, um, Ashwa Jutinubu and his supporters, they want to start their campaign from the UK. But how much, uh, <laughs> we don't have diaspora voting, no, exactly. by the way. Exactly. Unfortunately. Oh. You know, and uh, the campaign there, maybe the purpose is to encourage people in diaspora to persuade them, to encourage their people back home uh, to support the Ashwadu when and if it decides to run uh, for the presidency of uh, Nigeria. Otherwise, this is just uh, an attention-grabbing, you know, gimmick, uh, you know, on the uh, streets of uh, London. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, thank you very much, Eugenica.